In this series of videos, I'm going to be dealing with a topic in physics. We're going to be discussing one-dimensional projectile motion. One-dimensional projectile motion. And this series of videos is a part of a larger series of videos that I'm doing on constant acceleration kinematics. So I'm doing a series of series of videos on constant acceleration kinematics. Um, I've already pretty much finished the first portion of that, which is on one-dimensional motion. And now we're working on the second portion, which is one-dimensional projectile motion. And I'm hoping that I'll be able to find the time to do the two remaining portions as well, two-dimensional motion and two-dimensional projectile motion. So again, this particular series of videos is going over one-dimensional projectile motion, which is also commonly called free fall, free fall or one-dimensional projectile motion. Uh, these videos are intended for students who are finding this material uh, difficult. And if you are finding this material difficult, I strongly recommend that even if you're mainly interested in projectile motion, please be sure that you complete this first series of videos first before you do this series on projectile motion. So if you have not already finished this initial series on one-dimensional motion, would you please just go to that series and go through that? Uh, and the reason is that one-dimensional projectile motion is just a special kind of one-dimensional motion in general. So in this series of videos, I'm going to be using a lot of the same concepts and techniques and notation that I introduced in the first series on one-dimensional motion. And I'm not going to reintroduce all of those concepts because why should I? You can just go back and see this series of videos. So if you have not already watched this series on one-dimensional motion in general, you're not going to get nearly as much out of this section on projectile motion. So again, even if what you mainly care about is projectile motion, you can understand projectile motion much better if you first have understood one-dimensional motion in general. So um, if this material is difficult for you, please try to do this initial series on one-dimensional motion first. And then you can come back and work on this series on one-dimensional projectile motion. Uh, by the same topic, even if what you mainly care about is two-dimensional motion, I'm hoping that you'll do the one-dimensional video series first. Uh, because in the one-dimensional series, we're going to be building up the skills that we need for two-dimensional motion. Uh, at this point, I, th I haven't even made these two series yet. Uh, but once these are made, I still am hoping that you will do the two series on one-dimensional motion first, if you find this material difficult. Uh, because we're going to be building up the skills that we need to eventually get to the two-dimensional motion. Uh, let me remind you that this is a, uh, a topic that's oftentimes called kinematics. It would be more accurate to call it constant acceleration kinematics. Um, and maybe it would be even more accurate to call it constant acceleration translational kinematics. Uh, that is, we're not going to be talking about rotation. Rotation is a separate topic that maybe I'll get to eventually. But here we're just talking about translational or linear movement, uh, not rotational movement. So again, uh, the point I'm trying to make is that this particular series of videos is covering one-dimensional projectile motion, which is a type of constant acceleration kinematics. But I hope that before you go through this series, you will have already finished the previous series on one-dimensional motion in general. And then when you finish both of these, that will make you well prepared to go on to the third part, which is on two-dimensional motion. I haven't actually started that part yet, but hopefully I'll get to that eventually. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos by going to my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. Here's the address, www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. Thanks. As I mentioned, uh, this series of videos is intended for students who are finding, some, finding this material to be difficult. Um, and a couple consequences of that, uh, if you do not find this material to be difficult, then maybe this is not the best way for you to learn the material because you might find it very boring. I'm going to be repeating myself a lot and doing a lot of examples and trying to go very slowly to help people who find the material to be difficult. Um, but if you don't find the material difficult, you might be very bored by these videos and perhaps then you'd prefer to learn from your textbook or from your class. 
Um, and now the other very important consequence of this, again, I'm intending this material for people who find the material difficult, and therefore, um, as you already know, if you've gone through this first series on one-dimensional motion, you already know that I'm going to be very bossy in these videos. I'm going to be telling you exactly what to do to solve these problems. Uh, I'm going to be putting up on the board what I think is the exact best notation for doing these problems. Uh, I'm going to give you a precise, systematic, five-step approach, and I'm going to insist on using that each time. Uh, and I'm going to give you a precise notation and insist on using that each time. Uh, as you already know, if you've done the first series of videos, I'm going to be very particular, for example, about always writing down the signs. Writing down the signs, not just in front of negative numbers, but also in front of positive numbers. Um, so I hope that um, all that bossiness won't come across as rude, but the reason I'm doing that is um, that I think that it's very important if you find this material difficult to have a systematic approach and a systematic notation um, that can protect you from a lot of the common mistakes. So I encourage you um, not to be lazy, but to try not just to get the questions right, but to try to get them right using the same notation and approach that I'm using in these videos. And I hope you'll forgive me uh, if I really insist on that um, over and over and come across uh, as a little bit rude uh, about that.